Sam, thanks very much for joining me for a little no chat. No worries, no worries, no worries. We're going to get stuck right into it. Okay. First of all, I want to congratulate you. Obviously, you got the win in Santiago. Thank you. Thank now you. that means that you have won a race in every single Formula E season, and, yep. the, and you're the only person to have done that. Yeah. Which is an amazing feat. But there's still no championship yet. Do you know what? It doesn't affect me so much. I, I would dearly love to win a championship, yeah, but I, I know that especially, definitely last year and uh, season two, for example, I, I didn't have the machinery underneath me in order to, to really fight. Season three, you could argue that maybe the machinery was there, but the understanding about the machinery wasn't. Yeah, most of the time, we've, we've had our backs up against the wall in comparison to the likes of Dams and, and Audi and uh, I think overachieved at times as a team, which is a great thing. This year, could it be different? Time will tell. Going back to last season, you just sort of mentioned it there. You had a car that wasn't... It didn't, let's just say it didn't reflect the skill that you had to put into it. When you're coming up to that point, does that play in your head at all? Are you thinking, you know, I've really got this, I can do this, but I'm being withheld? Uh, it, was, it was annoying going into New York knowing that I didn't have a hope in hell. I mean, even if, if Jeva DNF'd both of those races, I still couldn't have won the championship. Because we just did not have the efficiency going into it. And we knew that as a team. That's how demoralising is that, going into the, the title decider and, and Formula E want you to take it to, to the end. And there's, there's, you know, you've got a lot of momentum with you and, and you're right there. but. Deep down, you know you can't. That's, that's demoralising. That was tough. So off the back of that, you then had to prepare yourself for this season. So how, how do you do that? How do you prepare yourself for a season coming off something like that? Honestly, Sunday night after uh, the disappointment in New York, especially losing second in the championship by one point, that was unbelievable. But um, Sunday night, forget about that one. It was move on to this season. We knew that we'd be getting an Audi, Audi powertrain for this season. and. Uh, the, the focus just shifted immediately to, to thinking about the Gen 2 car in Season 5. Obviously, the racing lifestyle it can be pretty... It can be a bit overwhelming and very demanding, travel-wise, commitment-wise. You're away from home, a lot, away from your family a lot. In your profession, what is that like, that always being away, always travelling? It's tough. It can be tough. I mean, you miss your family. You miss... I miss, I miss obviously, my wife, the kids, the dog. Um, Sometimes my mum and dad. <laughs> you know, it's the price price that we pay for being professional sportsmen. That's the same for everybody that in sport. You know, you've got sacrifices. That's one of them. But I get to do what I love on a, on a, on a weekly basis for work, so I can't complain too much. It seems to me, and that from what I've seen, that you've maybe got this extra level of ruthlessness into the season. You're, you're really sort of fighting for it. Is would you say you've been guilty in the past of perhaps being too nice on the track? You know, I can be ruthless at times. I think there's there's times to be ruthless, there's times not to be. And I think that you've got to be measured in your approach in, in when you choose to be ruthless and when you choose not to be so. Yeah, I was decisive in Santiago with overtaking. When I needed to get it done, I got it done. As the season goes on, we're going to see more about how I approach each race, how I go about what intensity levels I have to bring to each each venue and championship uh, position will reflect that, I think. I love that. Cool, calm, collected. You've got that sort of patience and you do your talking on the track. At the end of the day, it's the points that count. The team, the team employs me to score as many points as I can and that's my job. Is this the season that you put that title that may be floating there, the nearly man, to bed you the say this man, is the, the year Sam Bird wins a Formula E Championship I'm and never, with that I'm... in mind, does that bring an extra degree of pressure? All I can do is give 100% and if that means it's a P8 at the end of the day, but I've driven at the best of my personal ability, then I have to hold my head up high and say that's, that's okay. I maximised what I could today. Does it mean I'm going to bring a championship this year because I've been this nearly man every single year? I would love to win a championship, don't get me wrong, I would love to. And I've led championships before and I've come close and all the records state that I'm there or thereabouts, but it's not like we need to change the formula. Yeah, last year I was, I was consistent, but that's, that's the aim, to be consistent every weekend, score points every weekend. There's no, there's no secret to that. You look at Jeb last year, he scored at every single race. That's just what is required. Thanks for joining me for the chat. No worries, thank you very yeah. much. Cheers, guys.